بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, we are talking about the holy life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nabiyu al-Rahma, the Prophet of mercy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rahmatul Alameen, mercy for all. And we were talking about when he started conveying the message to the people of Makkah. His own people, his own relations, and everybody, and they, start, they, they, they became bitter enemies. And uh, they were the very people that used to love the Prophet so much. They used to call him Muhammad al Amin. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the trustworthy. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered them all and said to them that, come here, all of you, and on the mountain of Safa, and said to them that, you know, if I tell you that an enemy is going to attack you, what are you going to say? They say, Jarrabna kamirara. We have experienced you for a very long time, many times, and we found that we found you the truthful, the trustworthy. So we will accept your message, your warning. And then he said that I'm warning you all. And he first, you know, he gathered all the chieftain of his own tribe and all the people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him, You know, give warning to your closest of your family. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to them that basically, you know, this is something, you know, you must take it very seriously. And I'm saying to you that la ilaha illallah, say la ilaha illallah, accept the iman, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal, and give up, you know, worshipping these idols and all that. And there actually what happened that his own uncle, the very uncle we talked about in the beginning that he, when he was given the glad tidings news of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he actually freed the slave girl. She was his, uh, his slave. And when she told him about the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Saudi ta'ala anha, so he immediately, as a happiness and a, as a gift to her for this glad tidings news, he was so happy on the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveyed this message to him, he immediately changed. And he was the first person. He said, Doom and destruction for you. And, you know, indicating to the Prophet, which I can't bring onto my tongue, of course, as a believer, as a Muslim, as a believer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, disliked so much. And Allah azza wa jal, you know, God Almighty, Allah Azza wa Jal, does not like anybody in any way to disrespect or show disrespect or, you know, commit blasphemy to any of his prophets or his books. Whichever prophet, you know, previous prophets or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in fact, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying for such people, there is very harsh punishment. In the Allah wa Rasulahu, لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ That Allah cursed them in this world and in the hereafter. They become, you know, those they commit blasphemy, disrespect. They become actually not only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them an example, but in fact, it's such a, uh, a great punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal that they never actually have found, you know, peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So, Abu Lahab, he said that uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the narration saying that he had some pebbles in his hands, you know, and he was trying to throw it, you know, towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ali hadha da'utana, and when he was doing that, those pebbles also started saying, La ilaha illallah, and he, he became really embarrassed and some of the narration mentioned that he in front of everybody making a, 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 a bad gesture to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Azza wa Jal 
stated this in the Quran and responding to him directly by saying, Tabbat yada abi lahab. And, you know, destruction for his hands. And hands are mentioned because he was trying to indicate with those hands towards the Prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned his wife who was actually the better enemy of the Prophet She used to collect, you know, thorny branches, thorny kind of, you know, small branches and collect them and then tie them in a rope and bring them from outside valleys and put them in the path of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying on the day of judgment, it will be, that rope will be in her neck, you know. So some people say that, this rope is either uh, in this world, it was either from the leather skin or either from, you know, palm trees or whatever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn it into chain and that will remain. And she will, what she will do in, in Jahannam, that bringing more and more, you know, fueling kind of, you know, wood and putting uh, and increasing the punishment for her husband. And that is a kind of punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this world, they were made, uh, they, they faced a terrible, you know, end and consequences because they disrespected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So that was a great, you know, kind of a position from, by the, faced by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's, that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent first delegation of uh, migrants to Abyssinia where they were received. And then Abu Jahal used to disrespect. Abu Jahal was also another uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they're both, Abu Lahab and Abu Jahal, were very highly respected, not only in Mecca, but in fact throughout the peninsula, throughout Arabia. And people used to pay them respect, used to call them, used to uh, listen to their judgments and this Abu Lahab narration saying some of the Sahaba saying uh, a Sahabi uh, عنه, saying that I was very young when I came to attend the event of Hajj and I saw that the Prophet وسلم, used to go calling people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala different tents and there I saw a man will come after him and will say that people must not listen to him He's our nephew, he's from uh, among us. He, you know, and saying different things about the Prophet وسلم, sometimes saying he's a magician, sometimes saying he's turned away from his religion, and so on and so forth. It's so hurting that the Prophet وسلم, calling them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa And they are not, not that they are not listening. In fact, they were bitter, they became bitter enemies of the Prophet وسلم. But actually, this is brothers and sisters, this is called hard luck. And we must always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal to give us good luck and keep us from su'ada and laysa min al-ashqiya, not from the hard luck people. So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. He's our creator. He decides to put home where he wants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us straight on iman and Islam. So this is another example for people who came from far away, Bilal radiallahu ta'ala came, you know, from Abyssinia, from Africa, and Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala came from Rome, and Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala came from Persia, and all these people, you know, came close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah blessed them with Iman, where his own household, uncles, very dear, very loved one, you know, like Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab particularly, and all the rest of the Quraysh tribes and chieftains, they became his bitter enemies. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us straight forward and on the straight path. So, after that, this incident and, uh, you know, the, the continuation of opposition, and then they boycotted the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the Prophet sallallahu said that that boycott was so harsh, nobody was selling us anything, there was no food. So we were forced. Banu Hashim were forced, the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, that they have to burn their shoes and used to eat it, subhanAllah, because it was so harsh. And 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, made it easy for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to come out of that. But suddenly, you know, that um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the, in the ninth of Zulhijjah, uh, in the ninth year of prophethood, the, the boycott finished. In the year seventh, I was talking about Abu Jahl. So Abu Jahl was bitter enemies of, enemy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And one day, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was praying in, in holy mosque in front of Kaaba, he came and he, you know, disrespected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in a very terrible way. And that something shaken the whole Makkah, reflected the community because they had great respect, despite the fact that they were pagans and, you know, mushriks, but they were still had respect for Baytullah and Masjid al-Haram. They were not stopping anybody. They showed respect to the Masjid, uh, which is very important, of course, all the time. People show respect to the Masjid. If we don't show respect to the places of worship, then you know, that uh, what is called spirituality goes away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away the unity and, you know, the respect in our hearts and minds for our faiths and religions. Today we see one of the main problems among the Muslims that uh, among ourselves that we don't show respect to even our own places of worship. We make it a, a place of politics and, uh, you know, uh, using and abusing others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all. So Abu Jahl did this very terrible thing to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is named in Islam as Asadullah, the line of Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was very, very brave person. And he went outside somewhere. When he came, he went outside for hunting probably. When he came, he was informed by somebody that how Abu Jahl actually treated his nephew, the Prophet ﷺ. He wasn't Muslim at that time. When he learned about this, he went immediately to Abu Jahl, warned him, and uh, some of the narrators saying that he um, had a quarrel or a fight with him or whatever. And that caused him to become Muslim. He announced his Islam very openly. And then after that, the Prophet وسلم, made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal, that, oh Allah, help Islam with the strongest of the Meccans, either, you know, Amr ibn Hisham, who was Abu Jahl, or Umar ibn al-Khattab, who was Umar later on, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Amir al-Mu'mineen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal accepted the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu embraced Islam in a very, you know, in, in a way in which reflect upon believers that how he went with the intention of killing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as he was walking towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his naked soul, he was told that actually his own sister embraced Islam and he came to, her sis to, to his sister and beaten her very badly and then asked her to, uh, you know, to expose what they were doing or reading. They were reading Quran, learning from uh, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And, you know, she told him that actually uh, you cannot touch Quran, the actual text of Quran, because you are not pure at the moment. So he purified himself and he touched Quran and he said kalima. And this Sahabi, who was the teacher, he came out and he said, Oh Umar, I'm, I would like to give you great tiding news that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua, special dua, special prayers for you that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give you hidayah, guidance, and bring you to this, you know, deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal to become support to all the, the believers. Umar radiallahu ta'ala then went immediately from there to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he reached 
he knocked on the door. He was asked, Who's, who are you? He said, Umar ibn al-Khattab. And the Sahaba asked him, you know, why you came here? What, what intention you came here? He said, I came to embrace Islam. And the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba were very pleased, very happy. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, from now on, we're going to pray in the actual Masjid al-Haram inside in the masjid in front of everybody. We shouldn't be, you know, scared of anybody. And that was a big, big support for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa But what happened after that, that in the 10th of a uh, year of prophethood, what happened that the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very beloved uncle, Abu Talib, who always stood with the Prophet who supported the Prophet very much. And he was like, you know, a pillar standing with the Prophet despite the fact that the Prophet was very sad that he did not, you know, embrace Islam and with his request, but he used to love the Prophet so much. So <coughs> he passed away. And then the Prophet وسلم, was inside, from inside, from his own household, from his own family, was Khadija al Kubra, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha, his very beloved wife who supported the Prophet وسلم, very strongly. She passed away in the same year. And that was a great loss for the Prophet. وسلم. This year is called Am al Huzn, the year of sorrow and sadness for all the believers because all the believers took the sadness of the Prophet وسلم, as their sadness as the sorrow and sadness of the Prophet وسلم, was regarded and felt in every household of the believers Allahumma arhamhum ajma'een so the Prophet وسلم, soaked with the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal that when he realized that the Meccans are not accepting, you know, the message of Allah. So he, with the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal, he went to the nearby town of Taif with the intention of actually spreading the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went there so he can talk to the chieftains and, uh, you know, he will invite them to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. And the Prophet ﷺ went there, invited them, but not only that they did not accept the, the, the message of the Prophet ﷺ, instead they disrespected the Prophet ﷺ in a very bad way. They gathered all the children and the mobs from, from the city and let them, you know, follow the Prophet ﷺ, stoning the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ was badly injured, his knees were bleeding, Mubarak. His knees, Mubarak, were bleeding, and his shoe became, you know, full with blood. And he, you know, was coming out. As he was coming out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Angel Jibrail alayhi salam, and another angel who was in charge of the mountains, and said, you know, O Prophet of Allah, this is the the angel in charge of the mountain being sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jalla to you. If you want to, we can press the city into in between the two mountains. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabiyyur Rahma, again referring to the title, Nabiyyur Rahma, the Prophet of Mercy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa refused to curse them and said that I have very much hope that insha'Allah, you know, in the near future, it will, there will be children from their progeny, from their, you know, generations, that they will be, insha'Allah, the cause of spreading the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa They will be the means of spreading the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa Muhammad bin Qasim, rahimahullah ta'ala, or radiallahu anhu, he was the very person who actually into, into the subcontinent and he was from Taif. So 
the Prophet وسلم, instead made dua, and that dua is very historic dua in which the Prophet وسلم, stressed upon his own weakness, you know, and said, Oh Allah, I ask you to give me strength and all the hearts and the hearts on the nas to the end of the dua. And that was a great, you know, dua. Uh, and the Prophet وسلم, he came down, he was met by a person. His name was Addas. And he was a worker in one of the, you know, grapes gardens. And he came out and brought some, some grapes. And he presented salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was really impressed and asked him, where are you from? He said, I am from Nineveh. And he said, Nineveh is, you know, the city of my brother Yunus Alayhi Salam. He said, yes, how do you know about that? And... The Prophet said to him, I'm the Prophet of Allah. I'm the last Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa And Addas, you know, embraced Islam radiallahu anhu. At that very spot, at this very moment, on present day, alhamdulillah, it has been preserved. There is a masjid there in this very spot, you know. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand the mercifulness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Thank you very much for listening and until next session, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.